my question is, where do you find your identity at? My money is not for me to flaunt and to be like, oh, look, I got money. Check me out. No, 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 no. If my desire is only for money, then I'm in a jacked up place. My desire is to do good things with money. You brought nothing into this earth and you can take nothing out of it. You lost everything, but you had Jesus. Would that satisfy your soul? Milan Jones. Hey, what's up? I'm Michael, AKA Milan Jones. I have a passion in my heart to spread the word of God because heaven and earth will pass away but God's words will never pass away. I'm practicing these words every day. I'm not perfect. I fall, I stumble. I'm human just like everybody else. But there is this beating passion in my heart to always keep coming back to this word and to uh, get up, get back up again and, and always try to follow what um, God is saying because creation and life is a kiss from God. And when we worship, and when we speak his word, just like giving that kiss back. So today I was reading from the Bible in one year, as I often do. And I share it with my group, our, my worship team. And uh, we ha- we were on day 19. Day 19 was talking about um, the most valuable thing. And uh, the story in there was about a guy named Raj, who was pretty much disowned by his family because he professed Christ and he found Jesus. And because of that, basically this family had a funeral for him. And it's like, okay, you're no longer our son. We we pretty much disown you and all this stuff. You know, he was homeless, but uh, he got took care of him and, and he somehow came back to where he was able to uh, provide for himself and also uh, preach the gospel and tell his story. Um, And so now he's a leader of Alpha in India. But I am on a journey right now. And this journey includes um, not only being well-versed in in scriptures and well-versed in knowing God's word, but also being a person who has wealth in order to make a difference in culture. A lot of times people push back saying that, you're not supposed to have money being a Christian. You're supposed to be poor and broke. And there's this idea of being um, someone who's always scraping and scrapping for pennies and, and, and money in order to um, show your, your faith. And, and in a way, it can be deceitful uh, because, you know, if my desire is only for money, then I'm in a jacked up place. But my desire is not just to have money, but my desire is to do good things with money. And so I started this YouTube, um, not with the idea and intention of making lots of money, but just to share um, music and stuff. And honestly, I got burnt out. And the truth is, is that when you do an art form, there are different sides to to do an art as well. And being financially stable and being financially sound and having your personal finances together is not a sin. It is something that uh, will help aid and keep you from being burnt out. I'm so thankful for my job that I have right now. Um, uh, I say jobs, actually jobs that I have right now. Like I enjoy being a praise and worship leader. I enjoy uh, doing video work and working with um, instructors and teachers and creating video. I have a passion for education as well as uh, create creativity. I don't like to make, I don't like to create boring stuff. And, you know, and so like when people come to me and they um, need a video created, I always like to do it in a a very creative way. I don't take, now just a disclaimer, I don't do everything because I'm one person and I can't do everything. So I have a music career. I have a video career. I have a, um, I wouldn't say a a worship career because that's not really the right words to be saying, but I'm making this video because I just want to put a staple down right now because basically, you know, when we was going through this uh, devotional uh, for the worship team and talking about Jesus, I'm like, do you really believe this? Is this something that is that you really believe? Is this something like, honestly, if you lost everything, like even your health, your wealth, everything, if you lost everything, but you had Jesus, would that satisfy your soul? 
And honestly, I can say, yes, that would satisfy my soul because I know that after all this stuff and all the wealth and all the other junk is gone, you brought nothing into this earth and you can take nothing out of it. You did not set the sun into the sky and you did not choose the day of your birth. There are some scriptures that I want to share that reminds us of purpose and calling and what we're supposed to be doing on earth because it is so easy to get caught up in all this kind of junk and get lost in the sauce. Yes, sir. So Luke 16 verse 9 says, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. That's Luke chapter 16 verse 9. And then 1 Timothy chapter 6 says, but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, men of God, flee from all of this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you were made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Okay, let me just rewind. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Okay, my question is, where do you find your identity at? Because here's the thing, too. Um, I am going to have money, like six figures, like probably over six figures. I always have to bring it back to this point, though, that my money is not God. Like my money is not God. I use my money to worship God. I use my money to bring God praise, to bring God glory. That's the purpose of my money. My money is not for me to flaunt and to be like, oh, look, I got money. Check me out. Look, I got money. Oh, yeah, look, I'm going to buy a nice Bugatti. I got money. No, 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 no. Do you know how much good we can do with money? Like how many children we can set free from slavery? How many families we can help have homes? How many how much good we can do with money. Money is not made to glorify myself. Money is made so we can make disciples, so we can build schools, so we can build churches, so we can bring clean water to, to countries that are in poverty, so that we can feed the world. That's what money is made for. That is my dream. That is what I want to do when I become rich. When I become rich, I want to use that wealth to worship the Lord.